Hey everybody, Alex Kazora, SteelersDepot.com, back with some Pittsburgh Steelers training camp and analysis. Today I want to talk about just a brief overview of the Pittsburgh Steelers 2022 training camp after 11 public practices, just a couple more to go, and of course their first preseason game Saturday against Seattle. Just some overall thoughts and feelings to kind of clue you in on what's happened in Latrobe, PA this summer. Quick side note, I won't be showing any video of training camp in this video of me explaining training camp, not allowed to shoot video. Some of that is out there on Twitter, but I will not be including that here, but we'll have a lot of tape for you after the preseason game. Starting with quarterback, it's been a lot of ebb and flow up and down between all three guys, Mason Rudolph, Mitch Trubisky, and Kenny Pickett. Not uh, unexpected there. I didn't expect any of those guys to be great throughout the entire slate of training camp, nor that I expect any of those guys to be terrible throughout the entire slate of training camp. If you made me choose which quarterback has been the best just based off of their training camp performance alone, that in a vacuum, I would put pick Mason Rudolph. I think he's been the most consistent, consistent guy. I think he's thrown the best deep ball overall and has been, you know, again, on a daily basis, the most productive guy who has not quite ridden the roller coaster of the Trubisky's or Kenny Pickett's. And that's understandable given that, you know, Rudolph was the returning guy. It was Trubisky coming in, learning Matt Canada's system. Of course, Kenny Pickett being a rookie. So I'm not uh, surprised by the fact that Rudolph has been the most consistent guy. I think everyone has had their moments. I thought Mitch Trubisky was really good yesterday on, that would have been Tuesday. I thought on Wednesday, Trubisky was the worst quarterback. And so that kind of sums up the up and down nature of those guys. But you could say similar about Kenny Pickett, who had a bad start to training camp, has gotten slowly and steadily better. And Mason Rudolph has had up and down days and sessions and things like that as well. Still think Trubisky will be the favorite to start week one against the Bengals. I think he will have to struggle mightily for that to change uh, the next couple of weeks in terms of him struggling uh, a lot the rest of training camp and in the preseason. I think the mobility for those guys have been impressive. I think Trubisky's shown a lot of leadership overall and taking care of the football, largely speaking, although today was a pretty bad day in that regard. Two passes that nearly could have been intercepted. Kenny Pickett's accuracy on the move has been impressive. His snap and throw times have gotten better. Still probably needs to be a bit quicker overall and do a more consistent job effectively driving the football downfield. But overall, seeing good, seeing bad from all three of those guys. At running back, no Najee Harris for the vast majority of camp. He's been hurt since last Monday, the first day in pads. Got his foot stepped on during his first carry of the team session, the uh, full tackling session, and so haven't seen him since. But a lot of opportunity for the other running backs, Benny Snell, Anthony McFarland, and the rookies in Jalen Warren and Mateo Durant. McFarland, to me, has certainly made progress and has inched his way closer to being inside the 53 as opposed to being on the bubble or outside of it. He's been used quite a bit in two running back pony personnel groupings and, and effectively used in Matt Canada's jet game and motion game and you know quick flat game on, on boot concepts and things like that. So I'm liking his odds to make it right now. Snell has been his typical Benny Snell self. And then Jalen Warren has certainly, you know, had his moments and gotten a lot of buzz this training camp. The rookie from Oklahoma State is a bowling ball, you know, really rocked up, squatty body type of dude with a lot of power, runs pretty angry. I think a really competitive and fearless guy. He's worked on special teams, second team up back on the punt team. That's pretty important and certainly worthy of note. Had his bad days as well, some fumbles, some drop passes, but I think he's responded and bounced back from some of those struggles. And so I like his overall makeup and nature. He's got the size and power that Pittsburgh typically looks for in the position. Mateo Durant has flashed with a burst of speed and a little bit of power as well. He's currently dealing with a minor, it seems to be minor, injury right now in the team side. Master T, former Ohio State Buckeye, really rocked up looking dude, big running back, looks like a linebacker. He's got some lower body explosiveness and some power overall. Um, And him and Jalen Warren the last couple days have really gotten a ton of carries with Najee Harris being hurt and then Durant being hurt. Uh, more recently, has given those other guys more opportunities. And so those guys will probably get plenty of burn uh, come preseason action on Saturday. Wide receiver, of course, the story there is George Pickens, who overall has been excellent. There is no doubt that George Pickens has all the tools and traits and ability you look for in the wide receiver position. His ability to track the football, how effortlessly he just glides and moves and runs vertically, um, you know, being able to pluck the ball away from his frame. Occasionally, he gets some double catches um, because he's got some smaller hands overall, but he has such a natural you know, catcher and plucker. He does that more often than some of the other receivers. He's been just a really dominant guy and hard to cover. 
I would just say that Pickens needs to work on his route running and be a more technical route runner in terms of, you know, getting to his death so much the NFL is about, you know, on a 10-yard cut, you better cut at 10 yards, not 9, not 11, not, you know, 10 and 3 quarters. You better be able to have that depth precise and accurate every single time. There's some work to do there, but that's not a surprise. He's 21 years old, didn't play a ton of football at Georgia, missed a large chunk of last year due to that torn ACL, suffered in March of 2021. So those are things that will be done with time and coaching and reps and mistakes and growing and things like that. And new receivers coach Frisman Jackson, I think is an excellent teacher and a really good hire, very similar to the way that Alfredo Roberts was a really quality hire in the tight end room last year for Pat Frymuth and Zach Gentry with Pickens. Certainly has all the ability in the world. Elsewhere, Calvin Austin has flashed his speed both underneath in the you know screen game and, and RPO game and things like that, and vertically as well in terms of uh, go routes downfield. Mostly played in the slot so far, and that's to be expected. Miles Boykin had a quiet start to training camp, but has picked things up since. Anthony Miller got off to a better start, has kind of faded a bit since, but still battling Miles Boykin for that six wide receiver spot. Cody White was running with the starters and the ones at the start of training camp. He's begun the fade and has kind of reserved, moved into more of a reserve role and backup role. Since Gunnar olszewski has been a not a great camp overall, but a solid one. He's a really smart guy. He finds soft spots against zone coverage and can sit down and, and flash his numbers. And I think it's done well in terms of the option route, curl route, over route kind of stuff. Um, his route tree has been a bit limited and he's worked primarily in this lot, but I think he's been a pretty reliable guy and pretty consistent start to finish. And of course, is, is expected to be This team starting kick and punt returner. Tyler Vaughn's has been an interesting guy. Didn't test well coming out of USC, but I like his uh, leaping ability, ability to track the football, body control, and he's got some short area quickness in his game too, and the ability to stop start and get separation on curl routes and stuff like that. So Tyler Vaughn's uh, maybe been a little bit more quiet the last couple days, but someone who caught my eye early. Tight end, not much to note there. Pat Frymuth has really not practiced a lot this summer due to a hamstring injury. He is now back full, and so that's good. Not a big concern, but probably not the ideal training camp for Pat Frymuth. Zach Gentry's missed some time as well. He's been okay, maybe not quite as good as I thought he would be. Looking for him to take that extra step as a receiver. Downfield did have one nice catch against Miles Jack earlier in camp, but it's been pretty quiet for him since. Jay Sternberger... Is a decent route runner, good athlete overall, but not a great blocker. And, and as a body catcher, allows too many into his chest. The hands are inconsistent there. So I think Kevin Rader uh, could get the practice squad spot over him. Still battling Connor Hayward, who is undersized for the position, but really athletic, good hands overall. A little up and down in terms of his play, trying to find consistency there. He's got some things to work on, kind of a new position for him after playing more you know, fullback. He played tight end last year at Michigan State some, but not as a full-time tight end the way that he's being used now in Pittsburgh, and of course the NFL, a different game overall. He's actually been used as a fullback a little bit the last couple days with Derek Watt dealing with a shoulder injury. So Hayward has flashed and certainly moves well, um, just trying to find that more day-to-day consistency. That's the key for him. Offensive lines can be tough to judge, especially on days in which they're not working in pads. I think just overall the group's been healthy. I I know Kevin Dotson's dealing with a right ankle injury right now. That appears to be minor, so I'm not terribly concerned about that. But overall, a much healthier starting five than compared to a year ago when guys couldn't get back until late in training camp and other guys were leaving and Banner was dealing with the ACL uh, setback and things like that. Just a mess last year. It's been certainly less of a mess overall. I think Mason Cole, Dan Moore Jr. have had good camps overall. I think Dotson is still has the slight advantage over Kendrick Green at left guard right now. It's been a true rotation the entire camp until Dotson got hurt. Uh, James Daniels maybe not quite as good as I thought he would be, but it's early and there's some settling in that I'm sure he needs to do with the new offensive line coach, new team, etc. But hopefully James Daniels look, looks a bit better in the preseason action as opposed to what I've seen from him in training camp. Defensive line has been really strong. There are some injury concerns there with Montrevious Adams with an ankle injury. Don't know the extent of that. Tyson Alu Alu looks close to a return. He's officially off pup. That happened on Monday. He's yet to return in team. But it's been a really good group overall. Larry Ogunjobi returned to team after the team. Uh, slow playing things with that foot injury he suffered last winter. His first day of team was on Monday as well. And he was absolutely dominant during that run session. And he quickly moved up to first team after running second team. Uh, hasn't worked really much in base, but it's been more of a sub package nickel defensive tackle with three tech, and he's done that job really well overall. It's just a deep group. There are a lot of guys. There, they're they're going to keep at least seven. Uh, Leal's done well. Lattermoke's done well against the run. He's more focused as a power pass rusher, doing less finesse and cross chops and you know swipes and things like that. He's focused more on power and, and bull rush and push pull and things like that. 
that's been really encouraging to see. And then behind that, even Carlos Davis, Khalil Davis, the Davis twins have both been really athletic and toolsy and with quick hands. And I think both are going to be disruptive at times during uh, preseason action during uh, these these three games here, starting on Saturday against Seattle. So I think those guys are going to be tough cuts, probably not going to make it, but um, I think it's a really quality, deep room overall. Outside linebacker TJ Watts, but his dominant self, Alex Highsmith, has had a nice uh, summer as well, dealing with a rib injury right now, but that seems to be minor, not anything I'm too terribly concerned about. Derek Tusk has been healthy, available, gotten a ton of snaps. That's good for him. Jannard Avery's had a nice camp overall, really good bend around the edge. He had a 6903 cone come, coming out of Memphis and a uh, really good athlete overall. I'm seeing some of those traits translate, and he's got some size and can set the edge against the run as well. Not as good as Movin Ingram was last year, but. Uh, I think, you know, a, a decent number three. And, and he has not locked up that number three spot yet. Avery hasn't, but I, I think he'll probably be the guy over Derek Tuska, but we'll see what happens. Delonte Scott has been a really, you know, pleasant surprise and kind of a camp darling of training camp. He's been somebody that's been consistently excellent, always in my notes for the right reasons, day after day. It's not just one day where he shows up and he goes quiet for three days and has another good day. He's been consistently good, both run, pass, batting down passes, just a really well-rounded game overall. That path to the 53 is going to be tough because I think Avery's going to make it. Tuska's done you know, well enough to be that number four, but I think Scott's somebody that has really tried to cement that practice squad spot and will do so if he has a good summer the rest of the way. Uh, and then TD Moultrie, I liked him. He went uh, and was waived injured, so that's unfortunate there. Rondo Carter, uh, who just got signed the other day other day from James Madison, um, has actually had a nice camp in his first couple of days of practicing with the Steelers, so that's a name to watch. He'll wear number 44, Rondo Carter, will for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Inside linebacker, really good battles there. Unfortunately, some injuries as well, but I would say top to bottom, the most competitive, fun group to watch has been the inside linebackers. Miles Jack will be this team's three down, every down, all situations linebacker this year. He's been excellent, especially in coverage, but just a really active dude, steady Eddie, consistent, really enjoy what he's bringing to Pittsburgh right now. Devin Bush has been okay. I'm just kind of left wanting more. There's nothing been, there hasn't been anything in this game that's that's obviously bad, but in coverage, the one-on-one drills, which I get are tailored to the offense, just has not made really any plays there. And I've seen other linebackers, virtually every other linebacker at least makes some plays in those situations. Bush still seems a little too passive and tentative overall, uh, but it's not been all bad for him. And he's been, I think, you know, just just okay, um, which is better than I, I guess what it was last year. Robert Splane has been one of the better players of training camp. He had a really good day yesterday on Tuesday, um, really active, uh, good against the run, done well in some of the one-on-one drills, not as athletic as Devin Bush or Miles Jack, but really technically sound overall. So he's certainly pushing Devin Bush hard for some sort of rolled or starting job next to Miles Jack. And then behind that, you had really good battles between UG3 and Mark Robinson, Buddy Johnson, Marcus Allen. UG3 just got waved injured with a foot injury, so that's unfortunate for him. Marcus Allen has missed... A large chunk of training camp with a hamstring injury. He's slowly working his way back, but still a ways to go there. Mark Robinson has looked more comfortable and fluid in coverage than I thought. And Buddy Johnson has been making some more plays as well. And those guys have gotten a ton of reps with the injuries at inside linebackers. So Buddy Johnson and Mark Robinson getting a ton of time to grow, improve, and show coaches what they can do. In the secondary, Cam Sutton has been quietly strong and steady throughout training camp. Has had some good battles against George Pickens. And Keller Witherspoon has had a lot of highs. The occasional low, that's going to happen for a cornerback. But I think he's been largely good in kind of what he was last year in terms of his coverage ability. Levi Wallace has been a little disappointing in the sense of he had some illness issues and really wasn't practicing and has kind of been trying to work his way back. Just haven't gotten a great read on Levi Wallace so far. Certainly, George Pickens schooled him today on Wednesday in the two-minute drill, uh, back-to-back uh, completions against Levi Wallace there. So I think Cam Sutton and Kelly Witherspoon, most likely two cornerbacks to start in, in base defense in the 3-4, uh, week one against the Bengals, and then Wallace coming on in uh, nickel packages in that uh, 2-4-5 nickel. Um, and then beyond that, in terms of the cornerbacks, James Pierre, he's a gambler. He has really good days, really bad days, but overall he's been, you know, very aggressive. And I think Terrell Austin wants guys who go after the football and make plays and, and things like that. And so I think overall it's been more good than bad with James Pierre, Arthur Millette, a, a solid, you know, training camp in terms of that nickel corner, uh, run defense underneath coverage. He's, he's going to really struggle more matching routes vertically and man and zone coverage and things like that. But underneath stuff and run game blitzing. That's always been his forte. Uh, Justin Lane got off to a good start, had some good battles with with James Pierre there. Um, he's kind of started to fade, and I, I wonder if his roster spot's starting to, 
to, to go away a little bit. He's kind of really worked um, more third team, fourth team as the cornerback room overall has gotten healthier. So I don't know uh, if the time is running out for Justin Lane, but, but his time in Pittsburgh may be coming to an end. And then just quick notes, Chris Steele, the rookie corner from USC, has some ball skills, has a good pedigree and resume overall, um, but I just think he's too grabby and not super athletic, and, and that's a bad combination there. Kind of reminds me Justin Lane a little bit. And then Lyndon Stevens, a backup corner, looks too tight-hipped and maybe one of the first cuts as this team goes from 90 to 85 next week. Safety's been a good group overall. Minka Fitzpatrick missed uh, the, the vast majority of camp on NFI with a wrist injury. He's back full, though, and um, has had a really good camp so far. DeMonte Casey, first team free safety. Replacing Minka, his camp's been solid overall. I think I underrated Casey's chances to make the team. He's got really good odds to make the team right now. Carl Joseph has been really good in terms of run session, a really physical guy that that throws his weight around. So I like his camp. Is there a spot and path to the 53? That may be tough, but I think um, he's certainly pushing as hard as he can. Right now, Miles Killebrew getting back healthy after suffering a pec injury on the first day of training camp. Trey Norwood has been a little quiet, played some slot corner, and Carl Joseph has played some slot corner as well to increase his versatility and his value. Uh, Donovan Steiner, one of my camp darlings and sleepers, has been fine, but not the camp darling that I thought he might be. Um, but he has some size and throws his weight around overall. So I think the safety group has been been solid. Terrell Edmonds is just there. I mean, it's not bad. It's not good. He's just existing, and he will be this team starting strong safety week one against the Bengals. So that will wrap up my overview of Steelers training camp. Still a ways to go here. Still three games in, in preseason action to play, and that will determine and change a lot. And injuries will occur and, and all that kind of fun stuff. So who knows what the conversation will be like a month from now. Uh, the Steelers play almost a month from now against the Cincinnati Bengals on September 11th at Cincinnati for their week one game. And so we'll see what happens. But just wanted to give a quick overview of what's going going on at Latrobe right now. It's been been really fun. I'm really happy to see this team back at St. Vincent College. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Let me know your training camp thoughts in the comments below as well. Please like this video and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more training camp content and preseason action and review, which is coming up here in just a couple days. And thank you for watching, and we'll talk to you soon.